Hey folks, this is Jay Pac-Man here bringing you another PC video. Today we're going to be talking about AMD's new Radeon 5700 XT uh, graphics card uh, and the 5700 Pro or whatever they're going to actually call it at the end of the day. Um, and why I think it's a better value than the 2060 and 2070. Um, so, just to start off with... We're expecting it to be about 15% faster than Vega 64, um, and you can see that 10% faster would be about 12 points. So 12 points would make that uh, 132, so it would fall right in between the Vega 64 liquid cooled and the Radeon 7, beating out the 2070 by about 5%, just like they said. And I know that's not 15%, but somewhere in this area, it's going to be just a hair below the Radeon 7, that's what I'm guessing. And uh, at a little bit cheaper price for the XT model over the 2070, but uh, that's not what we're really here to debate. We know that it's going to be close in, in regular rasterization performance. Uh, we know that the RTX 2070 has RTX features that are available in three games. Whether or not that, that matters to you or not, um, they're not exactly high frame rate uh gaming um, with RTX right now so hey, that's not necessarily very pertinent but what is pertinent is input lag reduction this should be available for all games it's not up to the game developers to implement it it's a software related uh, implementation that AMD has developed we're talking about <clears throat> gaining 15 almost 15 milliseconds of delay shaved off on your input latency in the Vision 2. Um, but this is across all games, as you can see here. Um, Apex Legends dropped by 33%, Division 2, 33%, Dota 3, or Dota 2, 23%. Um, you know, and that's only a five millisecond latency reduction, but five milliseconds is five free milliseconds. Um, it's more pertinent for uh, many other games than it is for Dota. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about is how input latency is one piece of the puzzle. There are many forms of latency that we deal with when we're gaming. We deal with frame rate delay. We deal with network delay. We deal with um, input lag. And so all of these pieces of the puzzle come together to make your total latency that is felt by the user. So reducing any part of that puzzle uh, is going to make the experience feel crisper. And if that can be applied to all games natively, then that's a real value added feature uh, unlike RTX where it's only value added in three games currently um, so if you look here this is uh, on gamers next website this is the 2070s frame rate times um, yellow is the 970 red is the 1070 and blue is the 2070 so you can see here we're looking at 15 milliseconds per frame uh, that's what we seem to be averaging just a hair above it. Uh, so if you could save an extra 15 milliseconds of frame uh, or of input lag, that's like getting a whole extra frame for free. But more so than that, if you can shave off 15 seconds of lag, that's bringing your worst case scenario in Overwatch from 105 down to uh, 90. And so what did we see? Where is it? Overwatch, the reduction of nine milliseconds. So a nine millisecond reduction for Overwatch is decent enough. Uh, I mean, it's three milliseconds that allows you to be able to interact with the game more snappy. Uh, and, and, and that's a big deal, uh, especially in any competitive games where every millisecond counts. So to me, this seems like the biggest deal for gaming that's happened in a long time. I, I'm really excited about this, uh, this feature to reduce input lag. Um, any piece of that puzzle to reduce the amount of lag that you perceive 
between shooting a gun and damage being dealt and you clicking the button to initiate all of that, the lower that is, the better it is. So you can see here, this is from uh, a guy called um, Net, uh, I'll think of it in a second, doesn't matter, uh, for the time being, battle nonsense. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so from the time it took him to click the mouse till the damage was registered was 257 milliseconds. That's a long delay. I mean, that's not what the average was or the, what the best was, but that's a, that's a very long delay. And so every little edge that you can get counts. Uh, when you're talking about games that are working in numbers uh, in the hundreds of milliseconds, uh, uh, being able to take off that little bit is a big difference between you and your competitor. So that that's the my big thing on this. Uh, I'll, I'm waiting to see third-party testing. That's going to be important to find out what we actually do get in real life and how much it makes a difference and do people feel like it feels snappier. That's going to be the main thing. But also AMD talked about another technology that uh, they're bringing on this to compete against uh, DLSS, or well, it kind of competes against DLSS. It's kind of a different animal uh, achieving the same thing. But uh, this is Radeon sharpening, uh, Radeon image sharpening. And you can see the one on the left looks a bit duller than the one on the right. Um, overall, just more crisp on the mountains, less pixelated. Uh, so this feature here is really uh, a great component for uh, competing visual fidelity wise. Um, it, no, it doesn't really compete against RTX so much as DLSS, but uh, I think that it's the most pertinent thing that can be done right now. We don't have the hardware capabilities, uh, AMD or NVIDIA, to really ray trace a complete scene. Uh, you know, you can see through the Quake 2 demos, when you ray trace everything, uh, <laughs> it, not even a 2080 Ti can get over 30 frames per second uh, at 4K. So... Uh, on a 20-year-old game, that's it's not real good. It's not really a feature that is available to be used at this point in time. Uh, but uh, this image sharpening is, and so uh, over here at Digital Trends, uh, they they go to say uh, AMD shows a screenshot highlighting the Radeon image sharpening. Uh, pulled out of a crisper detail of the shadows and rocks from darker aspects of the image without interrupting any anti-aliasing softening uh, happening near the light sources. Unlike DLSS, which uh, must be implemented on a game-by-game -game basis, Radeon image sharpening is a simple switch according to AMD. It just works. And so the that is an awesome thing. It's going to work in every single game, just like the input reduction um, technology that they've come out with so this radeon sharpening will work in every game um they go on to say and nvidia never pitched dlss as a solution for upscaling instead it was meant to perform uh or meant as a performance answer uh for nvidia's ray tracing however in our testing dlss has resulted in blurry image quality at high resolutions to compensate for the performance amd has had uh, had both solutions running on Battlefield 5 side by side the NVIDIA system at 4K with ray tracing and DLSS on the AMD system with Radeon image sharpening at 1440p. The, revol the results were very similar with AMD system looking close to the 4K thanks to the added sharpness of the RSI or IIS. And because it was still technically playing at 1440p, Battlefield 5 hit a higher frame or hit frame rates upward of 90 FPS. Um, and I don't have that picture grabbed of that, but, uh, uh, I believe it was 90 versus 45 FPS on that. So, um, I feel like this is just a much better performing technology for today. Uh, I'm sure that ray tracing will be fantastic in 2025. I'm sure that everybody will have it and it'll be in APUs and it'll be wonderful. But right now, the hardware isn't there to be able to support it.
the hardware is there to be able to support uh, good upscaling, and if they can make upscaling where it looks great, man, uh, that I'm all for it. Once again, we got to wait for third-party reviews, but uh, I mean that looks distinctly crisper uh, with the RIS on. Uh, so uh, that's that's my take on the uh, R, uh, Radeon 5700 XT. Uh, I think it's going to be a good card. I'm sure it'll uh, uh, trade blows with the 2070 at uh, at pretty much the same price. And uh, uh, hopefully the features will show themselves to be more valuable than uh, ray tracing. And it'll be a worthy buy. Um, but I, I think uh, based on what I'm seeing here... Uh, this looks a lot better to me than ray tracing. I definitely care about input lag a lot more than I care about uh, a pretty scene, especially when uh, when I'm having trouble playing the game as is. I, I, I need all the help I can get. So uh, lower input lag seems like a win to me. And uh, I suspect that we'll be hitting right around the 2070 performance. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see where all the benchmarks place it and whatnot. But uh, that's been my take on it. Like the video if you liked it, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.